Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to my Colm McRae Rally Championship Novice Speedrun. Uh, this is my best time I could get. Uh, my previous world record was a 54.30. This was a 54.12. And uh, we're gonna not, hes I'm not gonna hesitate mess around on this one. This took quite a few attempts to get. Um, I was constantly resetting in New Zealand, and when I did get to Greece, I wasn't happy with my New Zealand. So this took a few attempts. Now I will go ahead straight away and apologise for the fact that there is no sound with this video at all. My dumb backside it, it forgot to actually record the game sound, so unfortunately you're going to have some music in its place. I do apologise for that. So I'm going to talk about a few things, actually a few like general things that I can talk about during this run as well, so it's not just a case of, oh, talking about the game, um, we'll also mention a few other things. So the first thing to mention is that... How this run works for those that have never seen this game before or know of this category before. The Novice Championship consists of six rallies, three stages each, ranging from New Zealand through to Greece, Austria or Monte Carlo as it's sometimes known, Australia, Sweden and finally Corsica. Now, normally on the PC version of this game we have an auto splitter that we use, however for PlayStation, for the sake of things and for easiest uh, the easiest thing for me to use is to actually just use separate country um, splits, so that's why you can see them on the right hand side over there. Now, like I said, normally when I do these sort of co-commentaries that are live, this is actually like a post-commentary, so I do apologise if it sounds a bit, mm, um, we make it up as we go along. Um, but the, the first thing to point out is that I'm using manual gears, so this is actually faster than using auto as the car can gear down in places that you don't want it to and also that we're using the VW Golf. Now the VW Golf is crucial. Um, the reason why we use the Golf is there's four cars that you use for novice. There's the Renault Megane kit car, the VW Golf GTI, which is what you can see here. I think it's the Mark III Golf, if I'm not mistaken, from 1997 on 98 that Alistair McRae himself used in the British Rally Championship. Uh, the CIB III kit car, and finally the Skoda uh, Felicia kit car. Now, basically the Novice Championship is two wheel drive. None of the cars are four wheel, um, supposedly anyway. And the reason why we pick the Golf is, I used to pick the Skoda Felicia, however found out that the Golf actually has 250 brake, not 240 like the Felicia does, and also has a longer wheelbase, meaning it's more stable under braking. Now, that does tend to mean that the car slides a bit into corners as we do the first stage there. Um, but the car will tend to slide into corners. And one of the things to mention as well is that the Felicia had a short wheelbase, meaning yes, it's great for small corners. Um, but as a long run, like getting speed down through the car, it didn't seem to help. So for that reason, we're going to just obviously use the Golf in that regard. And the other things to mention, that, uh, which have probably come a bit obvious in the last 10 seconds or so, is that you get a, you obviously have to spam through the um, screens at the end of a stage, so the stage time, if you've got a best stage time, best stage time, um, the rally time, the current rally, and also a save game screen. Now, when the save game screen comes up, what you wanna make sure you do is you wanna make sure that you obviously click no because that will obviously, if you do click save, it loses about eight or nine seconds. One of the main aspects as well, there's actually a few other things to know about this run. First of all, well not first of all, like the next thing, sorry, is that this game that I'm playing right now is the North American version. Now the difference between the PAL, so that's the European version, and the NTSC version, which is the North American version, um, is that the game runs at 30 frames per second in North America and only 25 in Europe. Now this has its own advantage as in the 5 frames per second, those extra 5 frames really make the difference. Um, especially on load screens as well. So I'm playing this on a 90k, so that's a SCPH 90001 I believe it is. Uh, PlayStation 2 Slim, uh, again that's the North American model and with the North American version of the game with fast disk speed enabled for quickest load times possible. So that's the reason for why we're using that version of the game. The other thing to note is that the Renault Megane in this version of the game isn't actually here. So you only have three cars for novice instead of four. 
meaning that you get like an extra golf, I think it is, or like an extra, or an extra, and an extra Skoda as well. I can get my words out today. And um, yeah, that's basically like one of the main changes, you know, the key aspects of it. Um, a couple of things to mention as well whilst we're going through this run is that New Zealand's actually not a too hard of a learning curve to learn for newcomers. However, getting it right and getting fast at it is quite tricky. I should also note as well that letting the car slide, so the cars have their own momentum and obviously sliding into corners is not great. It's not the best thing in the world because um, you can scrub off a lot of speed, but we're going to try and use that to our advantage and make sure that we do scrub off some speed, but we don't scrub off too much that we end up having to drop down a gear or we just end up losing all momentum entirely. Um, the last, let's say the last thing, the next thing to mention as well, and this is coming up right after stage two, on stage three, just before it, we change our tires to wet grooves. That's because stage three is a wet stage. And if you try doing that, that stage, with uh, wet tyres, sorry, with dry tyres, um, it's actually a lot slower and you often tend to slide out a bit. Now you'll notice as well that apart from on Corsica that we don't actually repair our car, no matter how bad we batter it, we don't repair the car. This is again to save time. Now I'd recommend as a first time player, for anyone that wants to run this for the first time, that I'd first of all get used to the game mechanics and figure out how the game works and how, the, how it's drifting mechanics and everything work. Once you've grasped that, start looking into car setup um, and looking where you can gain time in the corners. And it's all more a case of learning the stages individually is the main one though. Like by far that's the biggest part of this run. If you don't learn the stages well enough, you're going to lose a lot of time. Like you see, I, I accidentally hit um, the rock there on the left hand side because I turned in too early. So excessive track knowledge of this game is a real bonus. If you know what you're getting into and know what the corner's coming up and you know the tracks like the back of your hand, um, then you'll obviously easily get on with this game. There is several different surfaces that we're going to be driving on by the way. So New Zealand has like a bit of a mix of gravel-ish, like gravel and uh, a wet road and things like that, and a bit of mud as well thrown in there for good measure on this one especially. Um, Greece is obviously more about gravel than anything else, as in dry gravel. Uh, Austria is all about icy roads and a, a slight bit of snow, uh, and wet roads as well, or wet slash icy roads. Australia, again, it's more dusty gravel terrain. Sweden's all about snow and ice, and Corsica's all tarmac. In my opinion, the rally that I find the hardest is actually, I'm not going to say Greece, but I'm probably going to say either Sweden, or believe it or not, Austria, or Monte Carlo, depending on the version of the game that you play. The reason why I say either Austria or Sweden, or sorry, Monte Carlo or Sweden, depending on which version of the game you play, um, is that... Austria can be tricky with its sliding, like I said, the, the drift mechanics here come into their own, they're a massive element, um, you know, massive part of the, of the run itself, and like I said, mastering the slide is crucial, it's a big, big factor to, to, uh, to, you know, to include. Sweden is more tricky as well because there's snowbanks that are willing to catch you off guard, and should you accidentally hit one and go offline, you're in trouble. Now, for the most part, on this run, we're actually not doing too bad. I think we're doing pretty well so far. And I think at the end of this rally, I was actually about 8 seconds off my PB. I think it was about 8 seconds, I can't remember, but it was very, very good. There's also a few shortcuts, which we're going to do. Um, this one behind some trees, which is actually quite an easy one. I, I think, I want to say I figured that one out on my own, but I don't really know. Um, wanted to see if that saved any time. Anyway, it saves about a second or two. Maybe a bit less, I don't know. But the main bit is keeping it on track, staying focused. I mean, this run took a lot out of me. I can't lie to you on this one. I was very focused the whole way through. And I was like, there's got to be something that I can do. You know, there's got to be some time that I can pull out of this run. Honestly, did I expect me to have the amount of time I had on this run? No, I didn't. So I think it's about six seconds or so, but either way, it was crazy how much time I gained. Which moves us on to Greece. Now Greece, you put the car to good acceleration on its gearbox, and this is crucial. 
So hear me out. Normally when the game starts you, you have max acceleration. Max acceleration's fine. You can keep max acceleration. I'd actually recommend that for a new player um, so to start with the max acceleration as that's the game's default. You shouldn't really need to change any of the settings in my opinion. But if you want to get some extra speed out of the car, go for good acceleration. The reason why is I think your top speed range maxes out about 107, 108 ish, well, around 110 shall we say for round numbers, um, on max acceleration, whereas on good acceleration it can max out around 120 ish, around about there. And basically, the, you know, obviously the faster you can go, the better. Um, so keeping the speed, I'm not always going to reach top speed, but it does help on stage 2 especially because there's a lot of fast sections. There is a few in stage 1, not too many, um, but again, like I keep reiterating that keeping your speed is crucial. The entire game is about speed and determination and how much you know the stage and how good you can get with the car and things like that. Now, I have to kind of be honest, when I was doing this run, I was very nervous, I was shaking, and um, I didn't know how good this run was, really. I mean, it's still not perfect, but I didn't realise how much better this run was than my original PB. And it kind of scared me. Because, you know, you do a run and then you get a better run and a better run, and you think, nah, this run can't be as good. And then you eventually get what you think is the godlike run. And you think, yeah, that's amazing, no one's going to top that. And then, wouldn't you know it, somebody beats and you go, crap, I really need to go over the limit. So this was actually me going beyond my limit. Um, the 5430 I did over a year ago now. Um, that was actually not a bad run for my liking, although I reckon it could have been a few seconds quicker. The thing is, I think on that run I did not do the um, the trick with the disc speed, so one of the things to note is when you're playing this on a console, it works on emulator as well, but consoles where you probably get more of a benefit, which is um, if you do a console run, for example, let's just say stick with console for the time being. Like I said, it works on emulator, so it's fine, it works for both. So when you first boot up the game, uh, you load in, pardon me, and you load into the first stage. So you go into New Zealand, stage one, boom, done, you're in. Nice and easy. But when you come back out of that and go back into the game, so as in you exit the game when you load in and you go back in again, you'll find that your game loads a little bit quicker because it's already rendered the first stage. Now I'm not saying you do the entire championship then do it all again because the load times will be quicker. It's just that first stage more than anything else. And I found that that was actually quite a convenient thing to have to help me with runs and things like that. So if you do run this game on a console or on emulator, like I said, it works on both, apart from PC of course, is that if you boot into the championship, come out, as soon as you load into the game, so about when you have having the countdown, load in, click, quit on the menu then go back put your name in or whatever you do and then start the game again and you'll find that your load times are about two or three seconds quicker ish there are thereabouts anyway uh, but one of, the, one of the few things that I kind of wanted to mention as well and I know again this is probably going to be about 50 odd minutes of me rambling I'm going to bring in a few things personally from my actual YouTube channel because obviously that's where you guys are all seeing this right now um, but we'll get to those in a minute. This isn't an update, but I can kind of include things in this as well. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So, like I said, Greece is relatively fast. Um, it's quite a fast rally. There's not a lot to it other than keep your speed, don't knock too, too much out, don't wreck the car or try not to crash it too badly, and you'll be fine. Now, for somebody who's like interested in running this game in a different part of the world, so if you're from Japan, this game is actually available uh, in Japan. I believe it was called Colin McRae The Rally. Um, slightly different name, but either way, the game's exactly the same. What's funny in that game is that you can have the co-driver speak Japanese. The only problem with that is, is that I think the developers forgot to enable a, a language selection, which is that if you play the game with a Japanese BIOS um, and a Japanese version of the game, and you say, I want my co-driver to speak English, he'll speak English. If you say you want him to speak Japanese, he will speak English still. So I don't understand where the whole speaking Japanese thing comes into play, but that's for another day. 
And there is like, a few, again, a few other things to mention that there is a PC version of this game. It's a lot faster. It's about two and a bit minutes quicker. Um, although that run could probably be improved as well. And it's quite easy to get into. I mean, it's it might look easy. And it actually is, but it's not as easy as it... I don't know. How do I put it? i am probably make it look easy. And what I will say is that it is easy when you get a grasp for it. So it's a case of just practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect after all, doesn't it? So that's like the main thing I want to emphasize in this game. Don't think that this game will let you take it like, you know, this game won't take it lying down. You need to kick it around and, you know, put it in gear and make sure you've got enough speed in the car um, and things like that. I also whack off this last corner, this last wall here just before the, the finish because I find that that tends to help me keep my speed. I also managed to get a 231 here which I think was pretty good for that stage. Um, it wasn't my fastest time because I have done the entire game on intermediate so all of my stage times are quicker. This is actually another pointer as well what's from the topic of saving time. If you go through the game on the intermediate difficulty you unlock all the stages which is fantastic especially if you want to do the, ex, uh, the expert run. But it means that if you set the bar high enough, as in you set a stage time in the Subaru or Mitsubishi or whatever car you decide to use, a faster car, um, one that your Golf cannot use no matter how fast you drive, then that's a good thing because that means that the Golf, you'll be able to skip through, you won't even have that screen of, hey, here's a, you know, here's a, uh, what do you call it, here's a, you know, a screen for you to skip through and you won't have to do it. So that's quite a useful thing. Um, another thing to point out, I say another thing, this is kind of a more more of a thank you, so I'll go into a few things now. Uh, what's from topic, I'll, leave the, I'll let the game still play away and I'll mention bits here and there when I can. Um, but whilst we're on the subject of talking about things anyway in general, is that I just wanna say to uh, give a quick shout out to obviously the CMR community for being awesome, because they are. Uh, awesome bunch of guys. If you're ever interested in running one of the Colin McRae games, whether it be Colin McRae Rally 1, 2, 3, 04, 2005, uh, the Dirt franchise, which is obviously still ongoing today, then um, yeah, hit us up at the Colin McRae Rally Discord. A link to that will be down in the description. Uh, if you want to come and join us, we're all a friendly bunch. We don't bite your heads off, don't worry. Uh, if you need help getting set up with the games or you need splits or anything like that, just feel free to hit one of us up. Uh, we are, like I said, a friendly bunch, and you can just chat, you know, and have have a bit of banter with the lads and, and people in general. Um, yeah, it's more them nice little communities. Um, I also want to say a big thanks to Moria, who, if you guys have seen my one of my latest videos, just before this one, um, I did a world record comparison, which was me versus him. Now, bear in mind, when I did that video, um... I'd already done this time, so basically this video has been about a week or two weeks in the making at this point. It has been a couple of weeks in the making. So um, yeah, that's one of the things. Also, we're just about to finish Greece. I'm pretty sure I actually gained time. Or oh, didn't. I think I lost a bit of time. It's no biggie anyway. Greece is actually a hard one to gain time on for me these days. Which brings on to Monte Carlo. This was the name change one. I also changed to good acceleration as well, which is quite unique. Um, mainly because of the fact that if you have on balance speed, yes you get a decent amount of speed, but you ideally want the acceleration. You could switch this, if you wanted to, so, uh, switch this to max acceleration to give you the top end speed, uh, the top end acceleration I mean, because there's a lot of uh, slow corners in Austria. There is like a few straights though, which is the reason why I pick good acceleration personally, but that's just me. Um, it's Austria as itself is very bright, especially, just be warned as well. If you're playing this on console, the game will probably seem brighter than it actually is. Um, so I'd actually recommend, if you've got, any, if you've got brightness levels on it, maybe turn it down a slight notch, just so that you can concentrate a bit better. Um, I personally have turned it up in the past because of night stages, because that's an easy trick that people used to use back in the day, with CRT TVs and all this stuff. Um, but um, the other thing is as well is that obviously with snow stages you ideally want it turned down so that you don't get blinded by the bloody snow. Um, but to kind of go back, you know, the emphasis point I was mentioned before about the community, the CMR community and stuff like that and Maria, 
is that Maria beat this by a full second. I don't mean this time you're seeing right now, but he beat the 54-30 record that I set about February last year. Um, so, major congrats, and Maria, if you're watching this, thank you very much for beating my time, I appreciate that. Um, I know that sounds a bit weird to say, because normally world record holders are kind of like, they don't really say thanks for beating my time, because that, if I'm being honest on this one, the reason why I'm saying thanks is because of the simple fact that if he didn't beat me, that record would have stayed there, I don't want to come back to this game so soon. So, um, yeah, big thanks to Maria for that one. Um, the other thing to mention as well, again, whilst we're on the topic of thank yous and, you know, things like that, is I just want to say a big thanks to everybody who subscribed to this channel right now um, and, you know, has, has been subscribed, whether it be for a few months or a few weeks. Um, I noticed that, that we've had a major jump in subscribers since I hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which I did not expect. Um, so a big thank you to all of you that have subscribed since I reached 1,000 subscribers about two months ago, maybe a few months ago. Um, you guys are amazing. I think this year we've done pretty good. Um, I have been trying to put out as much content as I have been able to, and I do apologise that it's been more Twitch highlights than anything else. But then again, it is content, and um, I'm quite proud of pretty much most, if not all, of the uh, runs that I put on YouTube and don't think that I'm not reading people's comments because I am. Um, if you guys have got any suggestions for any speedruns you'd like to see me do in the near future then feel free to leave them in the description down below providing it's not something daft like Roblox or a Minecraft run although I could probably maybe stretch the Minecraft but um, yeah something that's probably doable and feasible. I have done quite a few runs already on different games and this also gives me an opportunity as we're just about to finish off stage 1 here. And finished on stage 1. Nice. 310. Not bad. Um, it gives me an opportunity as well to quickly shout out the Blind Runners community as well. Um, so, there you go. Two shouts for the price of one. Well, hey. So, this community in particular, Blind Runners is set up by a small group of people, myself included. So it's me, Cal, or it's Cal Lives, is known on Twitch. Uh, Ask JT, or Jordan, as we call him, and a couple other guys as well. Uh, Hypnotic, who's done been great to do the uh, the graphics for Macrathon 3 that happened earlier this year. If you missed that, again, I'll leave a link to that uh, that the, the collection for Macrathon 3 down in the description of this video. Um, as well as a few other things obviously, including the Blind Runners Discord, which I'll get to. And basically between, I think four or five of us, maybe even six of us at this point, uh, we've created this little community where it's allowing people to get into speedrunning. Whether you're a speedrunner or not, so whether you've never done it before in your life and you've wanted to give it a try, or you've seen something gone, yeah, you know what, I'll give it a try. Blind Runners is for you. Um, put it this way, I would not have run the amount of games I've run in the past six months had it not been for Blind Runners. Now, Blind Runners has done, we do, they do races every single weekend, um, which are often voted on. The games are, often, are voted by the community who wants to, whichever game wins. So there's three games that are picked on a Sunday night. The poll goes out on the Wednesday. The winner of the poll is the one that everyone can do. And depending on whether you want to race it or not will depend on how many races happen at the weekend. Now you can obviously, if you want to, you can do the um, the race on your own. You are allowed to do the run on your own. It's not a case of you have to do it because you've picked it. Um, but again, it's there if people want to do it. I've run Portal 2. I've run Kirby's Adventure recently for the NES. Uh, Hot Wheels Stunt Track Challenge. We tried, I think we've do, they've done Disney's Hercules, The Lion King, uh, London Racer 2, which is a game I've run before. I don't think it's ever been on the channel here before. But they've, we've, they've even done this game as well. They've even done Call McRae Rally, which was quite convenient because it crossed over McRaethon. It was the same weekend. But, um, yeah, would highly recommend joining the community if you're into spewing. If not and you're into just general gaming, you don't have to join. Um, I think the community is around 100 members almost at this point, or getting close to 100 at least. 
and um, we've got a Twitch channel and things like that. They've actually run Driver as well. That was I remembered. That was fantastic. But yeah, like I said, if you're interested in watching some shenanigans every weekend and seeing people run some of your favourite games, and you can even suggest to people what games you want to see run, they'll be entered into a database. Again, this is all available over on the, on the Discord channel, um, the the Discord server. Sorry, so would highly recommend going checking them out. Anyway, that's kind of enough with all the shout-outs done, because that's actually seen us through, near enough, most of Monte Carlo. Now, you're probably wondering, at this point, why is it called Monte Carlo on here, and yet on your splits it says Austria? So, hear me out. I'm pretty sure this is to do with either... I don't want... Well, not copyright reasons, but I'm pretty sure it's to do with the developers. So, for example, on the when I played the North American version, I emulator, the game says uh, Austria, but the actual North American version that I've got says Monte Carlo. It's kind of the same for the European version I have. So, from what I can tell, in terms of like when I was da when I downloaded the European ISO for the for this game for the emulator. Um, that there was a version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. I think somewhere along these versions, Monte Carlo got turned into Austria, and yeah, it just kind of stuck. Why they decided to remove the Renault for the the American version, I'm guessing, because it didn't it didn't fit, given the fact that this game was being sold on the American market. But I could be wrong. Um, that's just a wild guess. But um, as, as a whole, I mean, the game did sell quite well in the US, in Japan, in more case in Europe because of Colin McRae's influence over here. And I'll be honest, the game still looks pretty decent for a PS1 game. Granted, it's not the best looking PS1 game, but it's still pretty decent. Um, but that's for another time. Now, as well as this, as well, just to talk about the game in general, that there is um, several categories if people want to look at running this. Um, several easy ones I should reference as well. Um, mention and point out. So this is the novice championship. I've already told you how it works. Six champion, uh, six rallies, three stages of peace, in practically the slowest cars available in the game. There's an intermediate championship mode, which is also available from the start of the game, and also an expert mode, which is also available from the start of the game. Uh, sorry, no, is not available from the start of the game. We'll get to that in a second. So the intermediate championship. That doesn't have any cars missing, thankfully, so unlike the North American version where it has the Renault uh, Megane missing for the uh, the Novice Championship. If you play this game on Intermediate or North America, Japan, Europe, whichever version of the game, PC versions included, um, you'll actually be able to... Um, you'll actually be able to, to play the game with the four standard cars it gives you. So these four standard cars that, that it gives you are, it gives you the Super Impreza, the 22B, as that's Monte Carlo done. I should just point out as well, so Australia, we don't set, we don't change any settings whatsoever. We just leave the entire car the way it is. This is because the settings we've got are actually perfect for the car. Um, and I do this on intermediate and expert championship modes too. So just to point that out whilst we're going through Australia. Um, getting back to like the, the championship itself, the intermediate championship is four cars that you pick that you can pick from. So that's the Super Impreza, the 22B from 1998, I presume, or oh, 97. I can't be quite sure. Uh, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 4, or the E4 as they call it in game, the Ford Escort WRC, and the Toyota Corolla WRC. Well, out of the four cars, the slowest one I believe is the Escort. Uh, and the fastest is the Subaru Impreza, pardon me, I was just yawning that, the Subaru Impreza 22B, or uh, I think it is, yeah, it is the 22B that's mentioned in the game. Um, so yeah, the, the four cars you can pick are, I mean, the, the Evo is pretty quick, although I'd still say go for the Subaru, and the Toyota's got some pretty insane speed. Like, it's really good top speed, but its acceleration's pretty bad, even on, like, good acceleration or max acceleration is pretty slow compared to the Subaru. That and I think it has a really long wheelbase which doesn't seem to help. Um, so getting the power down doesn't allow it to, you know, doesn't ex the engine can't extradite the power and get it up to speed quick enough. But um, yeah, like I said, as a whole, there's a couple of categories that you can try out. So 
Going back to kind of what was mentioned before, so you obviously have the Novice Championship, six rallies, three stages apiece. You have the Intermediate Championship, which is eight rallies. So the other two rallies on top of Corsica, uh, after Corsica, are Indonesia, which is a hard rally in general, and the UK, uh, also known as the WRC Rally in real life. Uh, the RAC Rally, sorry, in real life. And um, like I said, both of these rallies are exceptionally more difficult. And also, just to mention that in both of the, uh, sorry, in every second rally on the Intermediate Championship, there is a super special stage, as well as the fact that each individual rally has six stages instead of three. So New Zealand is six stages, Greece is six, plus a super special stage. So every second rally, so Greece, Australia, Corsica, and the UK, all have super special stages. These are like a one-on-one -on -one stage where you face off against your AI opponent um, and it's obviously up to you to beat them and to make sure that you win that rally. Also a nice little trick that I do at the end of that first stage in Australia there, as you saw, was to jump through trees. There is a few cuts that I'm gonna mention during this rally as well. One of which that I don't really take because of the fact that it is very risky, unless you can take it at high speed without crashing so it's one of them things really it's uh, an interesting one to have um, so regarding the cars and the speed and everything like that like I said the Subaru is quickest for intermediate you've got six stages each um, unless it's every second rally like I said Greece, Australia, Corsica or the UK you've got a super special stage the cars have got a lot more power so you'll be going a lot quicker through the stages and the AI will be a lot more tougher I should also point out that that run is nearly three hours long due to the fact of the stages and things like that. So just be warned, it is a long one and you'd be in for the long haul. Also, in both the, in all championships, if you fail to land in the top six, and that even includes a novice, when there's only eight drivers available, if you fail to score a point, so that's finishing the top six in that rally, you will not be able to move onto the next rally in the championship. So just be warned before you do it. I would highly recommend just playing it through casually, get used to the physics, get used to the faster cars, and then give it a crack, if you want to, that is. Um, the expert championship, the reason why I was kind of leaving this till a bit later on, or till now, is because of the simple fact that the expert championship is pretty much the intermediate. Um, however, with Expert, you can use any car you like, and if I'm not mistaken, in the Intermediate Championship, as you progress through, um, also there's a shortcut coming up here, which I'm not going to baffle on about, but that's the shortcut. There you go, straight across this grass here, slow down as you go over grass, and then bang, you're straight back on the course. Nice and easy, huh? So, um, anyway, so one of the things that we did uh, with, with the cars and everything is that you know, if you, if you, sorry, not we did. The, one of the things that you do is when you're on the intermediate championship, you can unlock these bonus cars. And when you have the expert championship, so providing you win the intermediate, you unlock the expert championship. That's why I'm saying it wasn't available from the start of the game because the expert isn't available because uh, you have to complete intermediate. Also, there is a shortcut through them trees which you can do, which involves you going through them trees, coming out around the side of one near the NGK banner there. Uh, and then crossing the line. It saves you about two or three seconds, but I didn't want to be an idiot and mess up my car Because if you're going through there at some speed You can't really stop and you have to get your slide pretty well Otherwise you flip the car upside down. And yeah, you've lost more time than you've actually wanted to gain So just be warned of that. It's a rookie mistake if you try and go for that cut um, That's definitely one to practice over and over so as I was saying, the Expert Championship is very difficult. It's not the easiest championship in the world either. It's, it is the toughest in the game um, because of the fact that I'd say to beat the Expert Championship, you need to have the Expert cars unlocked. Um, so you can use the Subaru or the Mitsubishi or even the Golf if you want to challenge yourself that much, uh, as I've done in the past. And um, it'll basically... It's, the same as the intermediates. You've got the same eight rallies, the same stages, everything's the same. It's just the cars will be, the AI is gonna to be tougher and any cars allowed. So at this point, an expert, it's just anything goes, which is great. Um, one of the cars you unlock is 
all the cars you can unlock uh, during the intermediate championship is the Audi Quattro. I would highly recommend using that uh, as it's the quickest car I believe in the entire game. There or thereabouts anyway. And um, it's also one of the best I feel. But yeah, that's the Expert Championship. There's also two other categories which are the 100% which we'll get onto in a minute, but I want to explain Rally School Percent, and I promise you this will be very quick. So Rally School Percent is a very short category, you may have seen a run or a couple of runs of it on the channel before. And Rally School is the Rally School mode, you have to beat the Novice, the Intermediate and the Expert Trials as fast as possible. Now this category used to be about 15 minutes, I think on console it might have been a bit longer, I'm not sure. Um, I know on PC it was a little under 15. And then um, one of the community members came along and found something which was, <coughs> pardon me, one of the community members came along and found that there was uh, where the start and the finish line is and the expert stages are right next there. He found that they're right next to one another. So you only have to drive about five, 10 seconds up the road, turn right, th go through some trees, turn right again, and then cross the finish line so you can complete it and uh, beat the run dead easy. So that's like the easiest ending ever, which is crazy really, when you think about it. Um, but yeah, that's also Australia done. So you've seen that we've had four rallies down, we're now onto Rally 5. Now Rally 5 has a few interesting things to it. First thing is, it's snowing the whole way through. This is the slowest rally in the entire run. I believe it's probably one of the entire, uh, the slowest rally in the entire game. Which isn't good, but what can you do? It is Sweden after all, it's full of snow. But um, you notice that we didn't change any car settings. Now I, I will just mention this, there's a few ways to go about this one. So there's either, when the game starts Sweden, um, the um, gearbox settings it gives you are the max acceleration. Now, to recommend this game to a rookie, I would recommend just leaving it on max acceleration because it will help you a lot through the corners. Um, that's for the whole way through. So you've got that way of doing it. However, if you want to do it a bit quicker and you want to do it my way, which is a bit more risky but pays off if you can keep your speed going, is you guessed it, put your gearbox on good acceleration. However, just note before you run off and do that for the second, um, for the start of Sweden, just be warned, this is what I'm telling you to do. Don't say that it is exactly what you have to do. On stage one, keep it as max acceleration, but on stage two, when you finish this stage, if you've got any damage, repair it, I'd recommend that. Um, unless you don't want to, then that's fine. But I'd highly recommend that on stage two, you change the acceleration to good acceleration. And again, what this is gonna do is you'll be able to well, you know, you'll be able to simply do whatever you need to. You can just put your foot down and there you go. Um, it's one of them things really. Sweden's a bit of a tricky a tricky bugger to master. And if I'm being honest, it's one of my worst nightmares every time I ever do a run of a game on, uh, a run of this game. Because Sweden's pretty difficult. But yeah, like I said, would highly recommend that if you are doing this uh, and you decide, when you get to Sweden, You've got two options. Like I said, your first option is whatever the settings the game gives you at the start, which is all pretty good apart from the fact that you start with max acceleration. Um, you can either keep it on max acceleration the whole rally through, or the other one being that you can use good uh, max acceleration. So use the max acceleration, which it tells you at the start. Use that for stage one. And then for stages two and three, use the good acceleration instead. Um, providing you can keep the speed going. Like I said, it's very risky, but it's completely up to you whether you want to do it or not. Like I said, stages in Sweden are very slow. As you can see, we're nearly up to three minutes. Each stage is nearly three minutes long, so yeah, it's one of them games, really. Um, but the other thing to mention as well is kind of going back, whilst I'm letting the game run in the background, is, is going back to not only the community, but also a few other things as well. So. 
Um, going back to this game, the 100% category for this game involves you beating Valley School, which we talked about before. That's beating the, the Trials, which is a very quick category these days, thanks to that skip, that trick being found by that former, the former um, CMR member. And um, the other thing is that in terms of what else is going on with, with this game as well is that the 100% has you have to beat the novice, which obviously like I said about, what, like I said, it's about 50-ish minutes to an hour, 55 minutes to an hour, depending on how good your skill level is, maybe an hour 10 um, for first comers or an hour 20 even. And um, that's, that's like one of the bits of the run, the 100% run. The other two bits are intermediate championship and expert. Intermediate takes, like I think I was saying before, it takes about two hours 45, so two, yeah, two hour 45 up to three hours. And then there's the expert championship, which is the same as intermediate, but quicker. And that's usually a couple of minutes quicker there, so that you're talking like two and a half, three hours for that one as well. Um, maybe a bit more if you fail on rallies and things like that. But as a whole, the 100% rule for this game takes I'd say around seven hours, um, maybe a bit longer, it depends on, like I said, your skill level and how much you get up to speed and everything like that. It's completely up to you uh, if you want to go for them categories or not. I know a lot, not a lot of people have wanted to do 100%, but it is an option if you want to try that as well. And um, whilst we're speaking of like, you know, moving, transitioning and moving on and things, I mentioned before about the Cormac Cray Rally community, but it's so nice to see so many new runners, especially over the last few months or even the last year. Um, we set the CMR server up, so the Cormac Cray Rally Discord. We set that up uh, in January last year, and it's had, I think it's got like 50 or 60 members in it. And the amount of interest and also people who have run the Cormac Cray Rally games uh, has been amazing. And I know there's a couple of people I want to thank for that. Um, the first of which is pretty much to anyone, so myself, Joseph, anyone else that's in the CMR community that shared the server around. Um, there's also another important mention which we'll get to in a minute and it's a big one. So one of the other runners that's in the Discord is a guy called Mr. Mary. And uh, he took Cole McCray Rally 2 to a Polish speedrunning event. I think it was at the start of the, during this year or something like that. And yeah, basically got people to do a time trial. So you got people to do this time trial for one of the stages in Finland. And um, people joined it. And before we knew it, when he got back, people started running the game. So big, big props goes out to him for getting people into running it. Um, who have never run Call of Duty Rally 2 before or never run a rally game before. So it's their first racing one, I think, or Call of Duty 1, anyway. Um, and it's really encouraged a lot of people to like show up. I think we've now on like 20 odd runners for Call of Duty Rally 2, which is really nice. Uh, CMR 1's had a couple of extra ones over the last few months due to. Um, I think Maria was changing from uh, emulator to console, so that was one of the things we had. The Blind Runners guys, McCrayathon 3 happened, and got a few people running it through that. And the final one. The final big thank you. And this is, like I said, this is a massive one. Because I think without them, um, this game wouldn't be a bit more known as it should be. That probably made no sense, but just hear me out. So I want to say, send a big, big thank you um, to the guys at European Speedrunners Assembly, or ESA as they're known. Because they have accepted Call McCray Rally on two occasions. They accepted this game, the first one, albeit it wasn't the Novice Championship, it was Rally School Percent. They accepted this last summer, so ESA Summer 2019, you can find that. Uh, you can find this run in the um, in the playlist for ESA Summer 2019. Um, even though it was a short run, I'm very glad that ESA accepted it and allowed people to see Colin McCurry Rally for the very first time. And also uh, at an ESA event as well, which I'll be honest, I was quite nervous for, but there you go. 
And then the other occasion being this year, so 2020, back in, I think it was middle of Feb, um, I think it was like February 18th or February 19th or something, and they allowed me to show off Colin McRae Rally 2.0, or Colin McRae Rally 2, whichever way you want to say it, um, the New Game Plus Championship, and the reason why this one was important was because I, I think that over the course of the Colin McRae Rally games in terms of what's fun to watch in terms of speedrunning, I think Colin McRae Rally 2 has had a significant boost, especially with the likes of Lucky and Franz and a load of the other runners in the community finding tricks and cuts and glitches and things like that. Um, and a few other people as well, uh, some of their friends, I think one of the Franz's friends or some of the Franz knows found a few cuts. Um, or glitches that you could do that just breaks the game a little bit and it actually proves useful. So, as a whole, you know, ESA has boosted the numbers. I mean, we had quite a few hundred and even a few thousand people watching um, both runs and they've gone down pretty well on YouTube as far as I can tell. Um, there's also, this game, these games have also been in other marathons as well. I've tried to get them in a couple of other marathons uh, as and when I can. And I would highly recommend that so those, like I said, to those that have never picked this game up and never given it a try and gone, oh, I'm not really into racing games or anything like that, please give this a try. I know that that doesn't sound like enough to force you to play it, but honestly, the game is actually quite easy to play, and once you get used to the mechanics and the physics, it's not too difficult. I know that could be said about every game, but for a racing game, racing games, in my opinion, are probably the easiest genre to get into. Um, depends on the game, probably, I'd say. Also, that's Sweden Dumber on to Corsica now. Uh, the final rally in the game. But the reason why I'm saying, please go for this and, you know, please try this out, is because, like I said, it is a lot of fun. Um, and if you need any help with anything, whether you want to play the PC port, run the PC port of the game, or the PS1 port, or the Game Boy Color port, for those that are interested in running a portable version of this game, because I know there's a few people here that like uh, handheld games, you can play the game on Game Boy Color. Now bear in mind, Game Boy Color is a lot shorter in terms of novice, it's about 15 minutes, not even that. Uh, it's a ridiculous time, to be honest, but I um, would highly recommend giving it a try if you want to. Um, you know, it's it's easier for people to pick up. It's quite dirt cheap as well, given its age. Remember, this game released back in 1998, so it's quite easy to pick up uh, for PlayStation and PlayStation 2. Uh, well, sorry, PlayStation, and uh, easy to get hold of on PC as well. Uh, I know there's a few PC games websites and stuff that that uh, will sell it, sell it you and the stuff for like a quid or a couple of, you know, 50p. If you see Call of Duty Rally 2013, do not be tempted to buy it because that is not this game. This game is the 1998 release, not the crappy 2013 release, which was a mobile port that got dumped onto PC, and that was a complete mistake on Chrome Master's part, if I'm being quite honest. But anyway, um, this also brings me... I'll bring myself back more into topic. That's, like, kind of general chit-chat done. So, Corsica is a tough rally. It's the toughest one, I think, apart from Sweden. It is still quite tough. I didn't mention it before in my tough rallies because of the fact that I feel like it isn't extremely tough, but hear me out as to why I think it's still hard in some way or another. So, first of all, you'll notice this first stage. There's plenty of corners, there's a lot of straights, and there's a lot of blind corners. Um, you know, there's, it, it's fair to say that you, you're trapped between walls. It's like being in Monaco. Um, where you can't really afford to make a single mistake, otherwise you'd wreck the car. The same goes for Corsica. However, just know, similar to what happened in Sweden, we're going to do the same thing here, which is max acceleration on the first stage, good acceleration on the second, and obviously for the third one you just keep it there. Now if you want to, I'll just stress this again, same as what I did for Sweden, um, you can also repair the car here as well like I did, because I felt I could get the most out of my car that, like I said for Sweden, you can just keep max acceleration on the whole way through, you don't have to repair your car or anything like that. But, there's another big problem with this, with Corsica, and that is the invisible collision detection. Now, bear in mind, this is prevalent throughout the entire game, it presents itself, you know, throughout the entire game. But, 
On this one, on this rally, it's more than any other rally I know. So for example, you see on the left and the right, the rock formations start and you can often see like a small line as to where they actually stop. If you accidentally hit one of these or you start grinding against the rocks and you hit one of the crevices of the rocks, your car will flip over and start sliding down the track. So be very, very careful. The same goes if you get too close to the the uh, brick walls on the left hand side. That was actually one of the scenes, that bit there where you saw me sliding against the thing. I actually thought the car would flip over and thankfully it didn't. I got pretty lucky. But like I said, you ideally want to not grind against the walls too badly because if you do, and I mean like at speed it's quite easy to catch like clip an inside barrier um, and roll the car. If you do that you'll lose engine efficiency, meaning your loss on power. You can also, in the intermediate and expert, it gets worse if you damage a car hard enough, your steering can be completely knackered and you can really mess it up and cause it to drive like crap. Um, but obviously on this one, the steering and the handle and everything don't get affected as badly. You probably can if you smash it up hard enough, but because it's novice, it's a bit more lenient with damage. And whilst we're on that subject of you know, times where you need to take it easy. This bump right here, I often tend to slow down a little bit here. Uh, as I've gone through there flat out, thinking I know better. You know, I've gone there flat out, thinking, yeah, I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And yet I haven't, so there you go. Also, this was a 156, I believe. Yeah, well, it's 156.77. And the thing is... That's not a good time for that stage. A good time for me, well, in my opinion, is like a 154. Which brings us on to our last stage. Now, stage three of Corsica, Cam Campitello, I think it is, is, I won't lie, it is a very tough stage to end the run on. And you can save or get, you can save time or lose time. Believe it or not, the best way to tackle this stage is actually with max acceleration because there's a lot of slow corners. But obviously, me saving time by not selecting the max acceleration did save me a little tiny bit of time. Now, I do lose a few seconds at the end of this run, because this run could have been a couple of seconds quicker. I'm not going to lie about that, um, which is a shame, but never mind, though. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll recover some next time. But yeah, as a whole, this run went down exceedingly well. Like, there's nothing that went absolutely atrociously, although I think I lost a slight bit of time in Sweden or Austria. Um, I did lose a little bit in Corsica Stage 2 for not driving as quick as I wanted to. But I think for all of the other rallies, I'd actually did pretty decent and pretty well. Um, but like I said, whilst we're getting to the end of this stage, I'll just say this again for the most part. Thank you very much to all of those who have supported me on Twitch and on here and has been watching the content for the last couple of months um, you know and supporting the channel. This channel is growing more and more by the day which is very nice um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, the other thing is as well is that I tend to use uh, stream on Twitch more than I do upload into YouTube so if you want to look for me on any of those social platforms then you can find me on those uh, Twitter, Twitch um, and obviously on here being the main ones. You can find me on Discord as well um, uh, if, if you wish to do so. Again, all these links should be down in the description. If not, feel free to just ask me for them and I'll uh, I'll give them out. Although, if it's too personal, obviously I won't. The obvious rules apply wherever you go. Uh, again, big thanks to Maria for pushing me on this run to do this run because without him I wouldn't have done or had another crack at this game to try again. Um, and also again the CMR community as well. And also for you guys for watching this whole video. Now like I said I do apologise that it was a very long video to watch. And if you've got this far thank you very much for watching it all the way through. Uh, you're an absolute legend. And yeah just as we're coming through the last few corners now. We're going to grab a world record off Maria. We're going to grab it back off him again. Um, stamping our... Well... Uh, stamping our authority well and truly on Colm McRae Rally 1 as much as we can. I know he'll probably come back and beat it, but yeah. This is a time to beat, and it's a 54-12-86. Now, I don't know what the in-game time was, but I'm pretty sure it was faster than what I had previously. And yeah, a good 18 seconds. It was a pretty good run, not gonna lie. 
um, all the way through. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you very much to everyone for watching. Again, I apologise that there's no music or anything like that. I did forget to write it to sound like a dummy. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ta-ra!